Uh, the final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 1491 in the name of Angela Constance on 60th anniversary of the ultrasound scanner invented in Scotland. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now and I call on Angela Constance to open the debate. Ms Constance, please. Thank you, President Officer. This year is the 60th anniversary of the publication of a landmark paper highlighting to the medical world the possibilities of ultrasound. And it's my great privilege to lead tonight's debate to, to recognise the importance of this groundbreaking work to Scotland's heritage and innovation, to the countless millions of people across the globe who have benefited from this advancement in medical technology, and to celebrate and pay tribute to the truly remarkable individuals who have made this possible. And tonight, presiding officer, we have more than 20 very special guests uh, in our public gallery tonight. Some of them were directly involved in this work and others are family, friends and supporters of those no longer with us. And I am very pleased to welcome Professor Dougal Cameron, John Fleming, the family of engineer Tom Brown, who has now retired from public life, and also the family and friends of the late Professor Ian Donald. And we have... <laughs> and we have representatives of the University of Glasgow, a centre of medical excellence, and the Glasgow School of Art, which has been at the forefront of design and manufacturing for over 170 years. It is a, a little known fact that the ultrasound scanner was invented, pioneered and built in Glasgow. The first commercially produced ultrasonic scanner in the world was called the Dysonograph and was manufactured uh, by Kelvin and Hughes in Glasgow. And the Hunterian Museum still has the original prototypes. And the first woman to benefit from this design and the safe, non-invasive imaging techniques were at Glasgow's York Hill Hospital in the 1960s. And today it is entirely routine for pregnant women to receive an ultrasound scan. But we should not forget that this is one of the most important developments for the health and well-being of women and their babies in the last 50 years or so. And if you can indulge me for a moment, presiding officer, I have brought to Parliament today the very first photograph of my son. And this scan provided me, uh, then a 37-year-old first-time mother, with much comfort and reassurance in advance of his arrival. A healthy heartbeat and the sight of a little fist raised in defiance, <laughs> a sign of things to come. So 2018 marks the 60th anniversary of the publication of the seminal Lancet paper by Donald McVicker and Brown in 1958, paving the way for advancements in the care of pregnant women and also a diagnostic tool for a plethora of conditions for men, women and children. And this globally significant breakthrough has been used to perform 8.7 million scans annually in the UK alone. It was a unique collaboration between experts in clinical obstetrics, engineering, electronics and industrial design. So who were the minds behind this world-changing invention? The use of ultrasonics for obstetrics was developed by the late Professor Ian Donald of the University of Glasgow. While serving as a RAF medical officer in the Second World War, he became interested in the possibilities of adapting radar and sonar technology for medical diagnosis. He worked with a young, talented engineer, Tom Brown, at Kelvin and Hughes, and also Dr. John McVicker, a dedicated obstetrician and researcher. And the three published their findings in the 1958 Lancet paper called The Investigation of Abdominal Masses by Pulsed Ultrasound. And they reported on the first two experimental machines. And unlike early attempts, the Glasgow experiments and trials it worked very well. And I don't think that the achievements of Professor Donald and others have been fully acknowledged. And it was Professor Dougal Cameron who brought this untold story to my attention, eh, a chance encounter eh, courtesy of my friend Mike Russell. And I am grateful to Professor Cameron who also explained to me the magic 
of this collaboration and interactions and interdependencies. Professor Ian Donald knew what ultrasound had been used for during the war and was inspired, and I suspect very driven to find a way to adapt it and use it for obstetrics and gynaecology. Dr John McVicker, uh, then working in a fledging NHS, knew that women, particularly those from poorer backgrounds, were often given no option other than having to just put up with gynaecological problems, often for years on end. The medics, however, needed the technical and creative expertise of the engineers to develop the product, in particular Tom Brown, who made it possible. And it was Dougal Cameron, then a young design student, who worked with Tom Brown regarding the design aspects. Otherwise, eh, as Dougal told me, the machine was going to look like a gun turret, and that would be rather off-putting for expectant mothers. There was also the work of John Fleming, eh, who did much of the electronic development of the disonograph as well. In the 1960s, the company that made the original machines withdrew the product and the technology went on to be developed elsewhere. But nonetheless, this is still part of Scotland's story and there is much to learn from it. And therefore, I am absolutely delighted that it's the Cabinet Secretary for Culture and External Affairs who is responding on behalf of the government tonight. As my motion is calling for greater encouragement for Scotland's excellent museums and other institutions to do more to shine a light on the remarkable story of the ultrasound scanner, an invention of global significance. And I have written to the VNA and others, but I do seek the Cabinet Secretary input on what more can be done to showcase this work as part of our heritage and innovation, our heritage and invention, and our heritage and industrial design. Because we should take great pride in this life-changing work and celebrate the achievements of those who made it possible, inspiring our children that knowledge and ideas from Scotland can be transported all over the world and that their ideas and that their knowledge can change the world around them. And the development of the ultrasound should not be one of Scotland's best kept secrets. Therefore, presiding officer, let this parliament record that Donald McVicker, Brown, Cameron, Fleming, no doubt ably assisted by many others, have over generations made a contribution to this country and beyond that can only be summed up as a gift a gift to humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and can I say, as I often do, uh, gently to uh, people in the gallery not to applaud, as is not permitted in the chamber, though members may applaud. Uh, I now move to open debate. I call Stuart Stevenson to be followed by Miles Briggs. Mr Stevenson, please. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Um, members will know I often speak about uh, my own experience and things in my family. My father, too, invented something uh, for understanding what was going on uh, in the womb. Uh, my father, being a GP, uh, he had uh, an aluminium sort of ear trumpet thing that you could listen to what was going on. And his patients found this terribly cold and uncomfortable in their belly. Uh, so my father, with his whittling knife and a bit of wood, made a wooden version of it that was much more comfortable uh, to his patients. That was his contribution to this particular problem. It hardly bears any comparison whatsoever uh, to the deployment of electronics and ultrasound to understand what's going on in the womb. Now, my mother, uh, who... Uh, gave birth to me long before the health service, um, had an ectopic pregnancy uh, before I was born, and uh, therefore when I was born in one fallopian tube. So therefore the whole issue of the maternity services that my father gave was a very important part uh, of what uh, he found himself doing. But in a sense that's relatively unimportant. The more important thing is uh, what this invention has contributed to safe pregnancy, the health of women, and the health of their offspring. Um, the, uh, the sonar background that came from the war, uh, and radar indeed, uh, my professor of natural philosophy when I was at university was R.V. Jones, uh, who was uh, the guy who was responsible for the uh, UK's uh, uh, radar program, uh, springing uh, from the same uh, kind of stable. But now, with the ability to see what is going on in the womb, to see 
uh, a lot of information about uh, the newborn before they are born, uh, there is, of course, the problem of ethical problems that come with it. And one of the great things about the medical profession is that we have seen the development of an ethical framework that makes sure we use this information in an appropriate way uh, that uh, helps the youngsters and helps the mothers. Uh, now, it's often the case, of course, uh, that uh, it's the ultrasound that uh, reveals how many are in the womb. It's often the case that these uh, little black and white fuzzy photographs are the first uh, indication uh, that members of the family have that there will be another one joining their family. It's an absolutely fabulous uh, thing. Uh, there is supposed to be uh, an x-ray of me in my mother's womb, given her uh, history, that's not surprising. But unfortunately, I've never seen it, and it will long since uh, have, uh, have, have gone. It's a delight that we've got people who were responsible for this in the chamber with us today. Um, inventors, designers, and scientists uh, are, given my own background, people with whom uh, I feel a, a lot of sympathy. If only I'd invented something oh, so useful uh, myself. But in particular, in this case, um, we have uh, that the design of the machine was adapted to make it uh, more friendly uh, for the pregnant mother. It, it's important that because we are in some ways sometimes accused of over-medicalizing pregnancy. And if you've got something that actually looks like a piece of engineering kit, that's hardly going to help the peace of mind of the mother. So designing something that looked friendly, might be the right colors, uh, is a good thing uh, to be done. And of course, the technology of ultrasound is now used for many other conditions uh, beyond pregnancy, including heart. Uh, as I gain in age, that might become important to me. Many of the organs of the body, so men too, are benefiting uh, from ultrasound. And it's just simply a bit of a, a sadness that Glasgow didn't manage to hang on to this one. But we had our own stake in inventing this and starting this. And I congratulate all those in the public gallery and who've been involved, and of course, my colleague in bringing this debate to the chamber tonight. Presiding officer. Thank you very much. And I call on Miles Briggs to be followed by David Stewart. Mr. Briggs, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to start by thanking Angela Constance for bringing this debate uh, to Parliament and welcome all those who have joined us in the public gallery this evening. And I'm pleased to take part in today's debate to mark the 60th anniversary of the ultrasound scanner. And I strongly believe that we should remember and celebrate our proud med medical history in Scotland and celebrate the medical discoveries and innovations that have had such an important and significant and positive influence in medicine and medical innovation across the rest of the world. I think that's what drives our scientists, our medical minds, and our innovators of today as they look to the future of medicine. Ultrasound is a prime example of an invention here in Scotland which has benefited millions of people over the world since its inception. There's an old saying that necessity is the mother of invention, and this is true with ultras ultrasound. At the time, X-ray was being used to examine unborn babies and tests found that this led to higher risks of leukemia and other cancers in the early lives of children. So the development of ultrasound was a revolutionary new procedure using high frequency sound waves to create an image that caused no harm uh, to the fetus. As is often the case within inventions, the right combination of people and factors needed to be in place. And this was certainly, as we've heard, the case in Glasgow during the 1950s for ultrasound. Ian Donald has, uh, had served as the medical officer in the Royal Air Force during World War II and had become interested in the potential of using radar and sonar technology for medical purposes. In 1954, Ian Donald became Professor of Obstetrics and Gynaecology at the University of Glasgow. And in Glasgow, there was still large-scale shipbuilding and ultrasound uh, techniques were being used at the time uh, to test floors in the metal parts of ships. Donald realized he could replicate these techniques and teamed up with other engineers, Tom Brown, who worked for the manufacturing firm Kelvin and Hughes, based in Glasgow at the time, uh, that produ produced ultrasonic testing equipment. And as Angela Constance has already said, the industrial designer in his third year at Glasgow School of Art, Dougald Cameron, was commissioned to design 
uh, what has become the lung machine. Initially, it was used to distinguish uh, uterine uh, cysts from solid tumors, but it's come a long, long way since then. It is, it is a procedure that is used every day. It's completely safe and is now used to monitor, as has been said, uh, babies in the womb, diagnose conditions, and, f and for surgeons, uh, for certain procedures. And let's not forget how ultrasound has benefited the animal world with similar medical developments for uh, veterinary surgeons. Um, that's something my colleague John Scott will maybe mention uh, later on. Scotland continues its long tradition of leading in the field of ultrasound to this very day. Advances in software and hardware have transformed the level of detail available for ultrasound scans. From the early days of the grainy 2D image on a screen, now we can generate 3D images on a high definition display, or even to use ultrasound scans on the basis of a 3D printed model. Not far from here, the Canon Medical Research Europe um, Canon Medical Research Europe is developing new innovations in the field of ultrasound, from being able to use 3D print model of your baby's face to making life easier for surgeons by combining MRI and other scans with real-time ultrasound images during surgery. In addition, like so many other fields, artificial intelligence and machine learning herald new opportunities for ultrasound in the future, improving our ability to detect and identify medical issues and begin treatment at an earlier uh, possible stage. And it's important to pay tribute today to Professor Ian Donald, engineer Tom Brown, and Professor Dugald and John Fleming for their contributions to this groundbreaking innovation. One interesting point from the history of ultrasound, not mentioned in the motion, is that Professor Donald discovered the equipment on the basis um, when he started working at Babcock and Wilson in Renfrewshire, in Renfrew, and the industrial version um, of ultrasound was being used. And by refining that machinery and building the understanding of what the human body looked like when viewed with ultrasound, Professor Donald and all of the others, together with the others mentioned in the motion, uh, created the foundations of the ultrasound scanner that we know today. And it might be hard for some people to believe that out of this visit to a boiler maker beside the Clyde, we can now give parents to be the detailed model of their child's face before birth. But not if, you know the little, not if you know a little about Scotland's proud tradition of innovation and invention. Having played such an important role in the or origins of obstetric ultrasound, we should rightly be proud that Scotland continues to imagine, innovate, and create the next generation of this fantastic technology. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Briggs. I call David Stewart to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Mr. Stewart, please. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and could I congratulate uh, Angela Constance for securing the debate this evening and for her very comprehensive and interesting speech. Could I also warmly welcome to the gallery all our VIP guests, and I hope you enjoy proceedings uh, this evening. Um, the ultrasound scanner, as we've heard, is just one of many important and groundbreaking inventions by Scots over generations, and I'm not including Stuart Stevenson's father, of course, who is a very proud inventor. Members will be well aware of the list, including tubular steel, the telephone, radar, and of course, insulin for the treatment of diabetes, a cause close to my heart, President Officer, as chair of the cross-party group on diabetes. Perhaps in passing, could I take a moment to mention my campaign to get Professor John McLeod from Aberdeen, a Scot who shared the 1923 Nobel Prize with Frederick Banting for their discovery of insulin in the University of Toronto in 1921. My campaign is to get uh, Professor McLeod to be the scientist featured on the face of the new £50 note, a campaign launched by the Bank of England, and members may have other scientists in mind, including ones mentioned already this evening. I would suggest they get their skates on because the deadline for the Bank of England is just in a few weeks. But I think that would be fantastic if we could have a Scott featuring in the new £50 note. Not that that is a note that I'm very uh, um, related to, uh, presiding officer. Um, as we've heard, ultrasound scans use sound waves for frequencies far higher than humans can hear, causing the sound to echo off tissue, with varying, with varying tissues reflecting the waves in different ways, and the echo patterns can then be displayed as an image. This also extends not just to humans, but to the farming community, and only this morning, Emma Harper is not on her place, was telling me it's used in the of Galloway to detect pregnancy in sheep, but you gather a bit of new information every day in this place. But compared to other forms of medical imaging, it has the benefit of being risk-free, showing images in real time, can be portable and lower in cost. Uh, and Emma Harper was also telling me 
the real importance of mobile ultrasound scanners for first responders uh, as, more, as a more recent initiative, which can save lives, particularly in more remote locations, such as my own in the Highlands and Islands. And as members have touched on, uh, the origin of ultrasound really came from a war setting. During the Second World War, ultrasound was used to see U-boats far under the ocean. So effectively, we've moved from war uh, to ward in a few generations. And as we've heard, it was Professor Ian Donald who was first to suggest using it for obstetrics and gyne gynaecology. And as we've heard it already, unfortunately, the company who produced the first machine uh, withdrew it and the technology been ended up being developed elsewhere. And I think it's a real shame, as others have said, that Glasgow didn't get the recognition it deserved for being at the forefront of this invention. So the first thought in many minds when you mention ultrasound, as we've heard uh, already this evening, is in pregnancy. And certainly that has revolutionised pre-birth scans to check in the baby's health, as well as we've heard allowing many happy parents a very uh, first sight of their child. Um, ultrasound scans come in many forms though, not least in echocardiograms, a vital way for doctors to check on the function of a heart. As a risk-free and easy method, it's especially important for checking on the heart health of newborn babies and for vulnerable children. Uh, another area that's not been mentioned and has recently been touched on in the British Medical Journal is that it can be used for detecting through brain scans the type of dementia that a patient is suffering from, absolutely vital uh, in their future care. And in conclusion, uh, presiding officer, we in Scotland have always been pioneers of new invention. The Scottish Enlightenment, with its outpouring of intellectual and scientific accomplishments, might have been primarily in the 18th and 19th century, but our ability to innovate has certainly not been uh, concluded. So my congratulations this evening are to the professors who revolu revolutionised ultrasound, and I'd like to thank the doctors, nurses, and other medical staff in the NHS who use it every day for the health of our nation. Ultrasound is an example of diversification from a product used in war to a lifesaver used in peace, a true swords to plowshares moment. Thank you very much, Mr. Stewart. I call Kenneth Gibson to be followed by John Scott. Mr. Scott will be the last speaker in the open debate. Mr. Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to congratulate my colleague Angela Constance for securing this evening's debate, as I'm always grateful for the opportunity to celebrate Scotland's prou proud history of invention and innovation. An ultrasound really is something to celebrate. And I too would like to welcome our distinguished guests uh, in the gallery to the chamber today. For many women, it would be hard to imagine going through a pregnancy without seeing their first memorable glimpse of their baby, as Angela Constance uh, highlighted earlier on. Ultrasound is a pregnancy milestone for many women and a special moment that can be shared with loved ones. Yet, as Angela Constance's motion highlights, these iconic black and white images of a developing fetus are a relatively recent invention, and just 60 years ago, pregnancy screening was a very different experience. Prior to the obstetric ultrasound scanner, doctors only had a stethoscope, or in the case of uh, Dr. Stevenson, a wooden horn in which to actually uh, assess uh, a pregnancy and listen to a baby's heart. And they used a tape to measure the fundal height and make sure the baby was growing. This provided a very limited idea of what was going inside the womb and gave no clarity on fetal anatomy, placental location, or anomalies accurate fetal measurement, fetal well-being, and many more details which we now take for granted in modern medicine. It's often difficult to know when most developments in medicine actually begin as projects evolve in tandem and intersect. Yet with ultrasound and obstetrics and gynaecology, there is no such doubt, for it had a very definite beginning. With a seminal research paper published in 1958 by Ian Donald, John McVicker, and Tom Brown, uh, entitled The Investigation of Abdominal Masses by Pulse Ultrasound. All developments of ultrasound diagnosis or sonography and obstetrics and gynaecology date from this breakthrough. Angela Constance's motion refers, references the contribution of the late Professor Ian Donald to his publication, and it is right that his legacy is celebrated here today. Described in his time as tall, red-headed and charismatic, Professor Donald was regarded as a generous and principled man who worked tirelessly, tirelessly to achieve his goals. Some medical historians credited this work ethic to his severe rheumatic heart disease, which made every moment precious to him. Armed with some knowledge of radar technology, which he learned in the Air Force, uh, Donald began working with his fellow uh, Glasgow obstetrician, Dr. John McVicker, and engineers Tom Brown and John Fleming. With help from Kelvin Hughes, a Glasgow engineering firm, they developed the world's first contact compound 2D ultrasound scanning machine 
called uh, the dinosaurograph, or perhaps diasonograph, uh, as Angela Constance called it. Uh, we're going to have to discuss that one later on. Um, but I'm, I'm convinced the dinosaurograph sounds right to me. Yeah, yeah. At the heart of this groundbreaking collaboration was a young industrial designer from Glasgow, Dougal Cameron, who I'm pleased to say is one of my constituents and is here in the gallery today. Professor Cameron first heard of the project when a student in the year below told him what work her brother-in-law Tom Brown was involved in. And the first outlined drawings were done lying on the floor in Tom Brown's flat and were, and were progressed in the industrial design studio in the East End basement of the Glasgow School of Arts Macintosh building. This first invention bears little resemblance to the technology we would recognize today. Eight feet in height and occupying as much as one third of the scanning room, operating the probe required no small physical effort. Perhaps unkindly deemed the dinosaurograph by some colleagues, the cellar machine undoubtedly laid the groundwork for many new and improved versions. In Professor Cameron's own words, this particular technology is used internationally and he quite rightly encourages us all to take pride in the contribution that Glasgow and Scotland have made to the lives of the 8.7 million people in the UK alone who benefit from this te technology each year. And of course we heard from, from David Stewart and indeed from Miles Briggs uh, the myriad uses to which ultrasound is also uh, used other than in pregnancy. And of course we have to look at the global impact it has undoubtedly had. I echo presiding officer Angela Constance's calls to encourage our museums and educational institutes to recognise the importance not just of the obstetric ultrasound scanner, but all of Scotland's rich heritage of design, invention and innovation. No doubt Donald Brown, McVicar and Cameron and Fleming were influenced by the spirit of the Scottish Enlightenment, which of course is the basis of a broad general education system committed to excellence and quality. Scotland's great contribution to the fields of medicine and science should never be forgotten and hope that by teaching young people about the achievements of their predecessors, they'll be inspired to push towards the next great innovation, whatever it might be. Thank you very much, Mr Gibson. I call John Scott, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I should declare an interest in this debate as a livestock farmer and congratulate Angela Constance on securing this debate today. In speaking today, I want to pay tribute, along with others, to Sir Ian MacDonald, John McVicker, Tom Brown, Dougal Cameron and John Fleming. To say that the use of ultrasound in scanning techniques has been one of the great inventions of my lifetime is a statement of fact and not an exaggeration in any way. And today we have to take the opportunity to mark this massive Scottish achievement here in Parliament. Professor Sir Ian MacDonald's pioneering work is credited with inventing this technique which has so benefited mankind with remarkably, as others have said, over 8.7 million scans taking place annually in the UK and many, many tens of millions more being carried out worldwide. But today I want to pay tribu tribute to Dougal Cameron, who was at the heart of making this early equipment work and welcome him today and others to the public gallery. Because Dougal is, I believe, the only one of the early pioneering team alive today, and I pay tribute to him. While I've known Dougal for at least 15 years, I've always believed his passion to be aircraft, trains, and painting. But I was unaware until recently of his part in developing ultrasound scanning techniques. One of the most modest men one will ever meet, but also one of the most talented. And so it comes as no real surprise to me to learn he had a hand in this. And ultrasound scanning has played a large part in my life as a farmer as well, where I was an early adopter of ultrasound scanning at pregnant sheep and cattle. If tens of millions of people globally are scanned for a variety of medical reasons, be assured that similarly many, many tens of millions of sheep, cattle, horses, dogs, cats, pigs, and other animals are also similarly scanned. So not only has this invention hugely benefited human health, it has massively enhanced livestock production techniques as well as veterinary medicine. Presiding officer, I'm privileged to know Dougal Cameron and have benefited personally from the scanning techniques he and others developed. And I commend this motion to Parliament. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Scott. And I call Fiona Hislop to close for the Government Cabinet Secretary, please. Uh, Presiding officer, I'm delighted to, uh, to respond to the debate on behalf of the, the government and to congratulate Angela Constance on securing this debate and an excellent uh, opening speech. 
and uh, the motion itself on the 60th anniversary of ultrasound. The technology which we've heard was pioneered here in Scotland through the remarkable work of the late Professor Ian Donald and Professor Dougald uh, Cameron and indeed others. Uh, ultrasound was, has revolutionised the care of women during pregnancy in Scotland and is now a firmly established part of routine care, usually performed when a woman first attends the antenatal clinic and again at 18 to 22 weeks of pregnancy. And while women often perceive the scan appointment as an exciting time and an opportunity to see their baby for the first time, the role of the ultrasound has moved from a simple confirmation of a single or multiple pregnancy in the right place to a complex diagnostic tool able, as we've heard, to screen for a number of conditions without increasing risk to mother or baby. And with the combining of Doppler technology, the ultrasound is now able to better assess the well-being of the baby by assessing the blood flow through the placenta. And this is, has enabled obstetricians to pick up more accurately when a baby needs to be born early, thus improving outcomes for babies in Scotland. And I indeed recall with my first pregnancy the reassurances that I personally had uh, in late pregnancy with the use of ultrasound. An ultrasound is often thought of only in relation to pregnancy, but it has a much wider application across all aspects of medicine, from supplemental breast screening to cardiology and gastroenterology. And it's safe to say that, uh, that this technology has changed our approach to the health and well-being of women across the globe. And it's hugely important. It provides women with reassurance and can allay their, allay their concerns at various points in their pregnancy by helping to protect, detect uh, abnormalities at an early stage and thereafter by assessing the ongoing situation of the unborn baby. But ultrasound has much wider application in medicine uh, and will continue to increase in scope as technology to transmit images on smaller devices becomes more freely available. And this offers scope to expand the technology throughout our remote communities. And as you've already heard, ultrasound was developed as a diagnostic tool over 60 years ago as a result of that collaboration between experts in clinical obstetrics and engineering and industrial design. So together, Professor Donald, Dr. McVicker, Tom Brown, Professor Cameron, John Fleming created the first prototypes and production models of ultrasound scanners for obstetric uh, scanning in hospitals. At this point, I'd like to take the opportunity to highlight a slightly overlooked part of this story, and that is the role of Rotten Rome. The famous maternity unit has made Glasgow synonymous with major developments in obstetrics, including Professor Donald's development of ultrasound scanning. I understand that in one of its earliest incarnations, uh, the early ultrasound scanner was wheeled around the corridors of the maternity unit ro at Rotten Row by a fellow pioneer called Dr. James Willocks. And presiding officer, my own mother was a midwife at Rotten Row in the early uh, 60s and actually worked with Professor Donald and remembers him well. Um, and at the time, indeed, she received a silver pen, she tells me, for winning the anaesthetic prize in some of the early use of Entinox. So, of course, what we see here um, in this debate and, and in this issue is the collaboration between Donald McVicker, Brown and Cameron, and it's the fusion, the productive fusion of academic endeavour and innovative practical design. And it's fitting that we're celebrating the 60th anniversary of ultrasound in the same year that we're witnessing the opening of the V&A Dundee, which as well as showcasing and encouraging contemporary design, celebrates Scotland's design heritage and everything that has been done in this field by Scots, both at home and across the world. And although the curatorial independence of museums uh, means that the government can't tell museums what to exhibit, I will uh, make um, the, the uh, move to, to, to make sure and draw the attention of this debate and this story to our museums across Scotland. Uh, design is the application of creativity. It is a way to understand the world and how to change it for the better. It is about form, function, problem solving and innovation. And in the history of the early development of the ultrasound scanner, we see clearly how academic innovation and design creativity combine to help change the world for the better. I was very pleased to note that the importance of ultrasound has been widely recognised, something which is clearly evidenced by the media's considered and welcome recognition and coverage of the 60th anniversary of the development, which attracted excellent broadcasts on Radio Scotland, BBC Radio 4's Today programme, and on BBC Scotland. And it is, of course, right that we acknowledge and celebrate the pioneering work that led to the development of modern uh, ultrasound technology. And I'm glad that the motion refers to how Scotland's museums can help promote this inspiring story. 
In that context, I'm happy to report that the first commercially produced ultrasound scanner based on the prototype machine, which was called the diasonograph, I'm sure we'll get the correct ex explanation of that uh, at the end of, the, of this debate, but it, the diasonograph can be found in the National Museum of Scotland, where it is on display in the museum's A Changing Nation Gallery. Separately, the original prototype ultrasound machine is on display in the Hunterian Museum in their permanent exhibition, uh, A Healing Passion. And I would encourage members to visit the museums to consider the machines that have helped to change the lives of so many women. In addition to the ultrasound machines themselves, I understand that material relating to Tom Brown's work on the scanner has been donated by his family to Glasgow City Archive. I'm also aware that the British Medical Ultrasound Society holds a historical collection which is based in Glasgow. Historical documents relating to the history of the ultrasound are held in the archives of the Mitchell Library in Glasgow and items uh, from their collections are on display at the Queen Margaret Hospital. Uh, this shows that the uh, heritage of this remarkable story in Scotland's medical and design history is being collected, preserved and made available for the public to see. And it is from those acts of collection and preservation that the public can continue to celebrate and appreciate this remarkable story. So, presiding officer, in conclusion, the ultrasound scanner is now a standard feature in hospital wards where scanning technology has made pregnancy safer, has allowed for more accurate detection and treatment of fetal abnormality. In short, it has become an indispensable non-invasive diagnostic tool. I think Scotland can be proud of the extraordinary legacy of the ultrasound scanner, which has done so much for the health and well-being of women and unborn children throughout the world. This legacy inspires us today, and I am sure will continue to inspire generations to come. And to Professor Dougald Cameron here tonight, on behalf of the Parliament and the people of Scotland, we salute you and to all your colleagues who have not just changed the face of Scotland, you've changed the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. And can I thank members for very interesting contributions. I've learned a lot myself sitting here. Uh, that concludes the debate and I close this meeting. <laughs>